Hi there, and welcome again to another in our series of the Edge and A-Level Economics Revision webinars. Uh, this is the YouTube version of Test 11, where we're going to ask you 10 questions on elasticity of demand and supply. A lot of stuff here from Year 1 Microeconomics. Great chance to check your understanding, and good luck with these 10 questions. Here we go, question 1 coming up right now. Which of the following events is most likely to lead to a rise in the market price? A, B, C or D? Press the pause button, have a look at the question, and then press play when you want to go through the answer together. Okay, so which of the following events is most likely to cause the market price for the products to go up? The correct answer is A, when demand is perfectly inelastic and labour costs rise. Labour costs going up, of course, causes an inward shift of the supply curve. And as a result, let's draw this on the diagram. The supply curve shifts from S1 to S2. If you have a perfectly inelastic demand curve, then the equilibrium price will rise by the full amount from P1 to P2. Uh, B, demand is perfectly elastic. Of course, there'd be no change in the price. Um, C, supply perfectly elastic. That could cause an increase in price if supply costs increase. But the stimulus is that the price of a substitute falls, and that, of course, would cause a, uh, a shift, a downward shift in demand, and therefore not an increase in price. And D, a labour cost going down, is the reverse of the right answer that would cause price to fall. Let's move on to question number two. The table shows the price of four commodities over a period of two years. Those commodities are copper, bauxite, oil and cobalt. What conclusion is supported by the data? Take a moment to answer this question. Press the pause button and we'll be back in a few seconds with the right answer. So here we go, the price index for two commodities, for four commodities over two years, copper, bauxite, oil and cobalt. What's the right answer to question two? The correct answer is B, total revenue from cobalt sales will fall if demand is inelastic. Let's go through the answers one by one here. So A, total revenue from the sale of bauxite will, will rise if demand is inelastic, while the price of bauxite has gone down. And if demand is inelastic, Consumers of bauxite will spend less on the products. The revenue will fall. B is right. I'll show you the diagram in a second. C, we can't infer anything from the data in the table about the elasticity of demand for oil. It might well be inelastic, but nothing in the data tells us anything about that. So C can't be, is not supported. And D, the price, the change in the price of copper, will it encourage suppliers to increase their output? Well, again, the price of copper has fallen. So if you think about the price mechanism here, a fall in the price of copper would actually probably cause copper mines to reduce their output because the supernormal profits or the returns from extraction will have declined. B is the right answer. Here's a diagram to illustrate it. We have an inelastic demand. If the price of cobalt goes down, as, as the table suggests, then total spending or total revenue will fall from P1, Q1 to P2, Q2. Question three. I like this question. Seats in the stadium tend to have what? Press the pause button, have a go. And the correct answer to question three is C, a perfectly inelastic supply. Consider, for example, a sports stadium, football ground, for example, take one particular season. Essentially, the capacity of the stadium is fixed. The supply of seats is fixed. Can't be changed in any one season. Hence, the price elasticity of supply is zero. Uh, here's a good example. Here, here are the uh, stadium capacity for the English Premier League in 2016 and 2017. And the sense of those capacities were fixed. There was actually a big design fault in the Stadium of Light, the home of Sunderland AFC. The big design fault is that all 48,707 seats face the pitch. Here's question four. In which diagram does the coefficient of elasticity demand equal one? Is it top left, top right? bottom left or bottom right. Have a go, press that pause button one more time and press play when you want to go through the answer. Okay, which of these diagrams has an elasticity of demand equal to one? A lot of people might have chosen top right. Actually, that's a, a, a supply curve, which is probably uh, unitary elastic. The right answer to question four is D. And D is a good example of a particular type of demand curve it's a rectangular hyperbola. Demand is said to be unitary elastic. Coefficient is 1 when the percentage change in quantity demanded 
is equal to the percentage change in price. That gives a coefficient of one. Total revenue uh, at each price will and quantity will stay the same. Let's move swiftly on to question number five. The table shows the relationship between two goods X and Y. When the price of X falls from 100 to 90, what is the cross price elasticity of demand for good Y with respect to X? Press the pause button, work out the answer, and then press play when you want to check it. So we have two commodities here, X and Y, or two products X and Y. The price of X has gone down. The quantity demanded of Y has gone up. So we have to work out the cross price elasticity. So the right answer to question five is C, minus four. The key to this is to work out the calculation. Cross price elasticity, XED, is the percentage change in demand for Y caused by percentage change in the price of X. So there's been a 40% increase in demand for Y brought about by a 10% fall in the price of X. So plus 40 over minus 10 gives minus 4, uh, suggests that these two products are quite strong complements. We are halfway through. Let's crack on with question number 6. The table below shows the estimated price elasticity of demand for three types of alcohol. For which products would a tax on suppliers reduce the total amount spent by consumers? Is it A, B, C or D? Again, press the pause button, have a go at the answer, and then press play when you want to check. OK, so three products here, each with a different elasticity. What matters, of course, here is the coefficient of elasticity of demand. A tax is going to increase cost and therefore increase price. So when will an increase in the price of these products cause a fall in total spending by consumers? The right answer to question six is B, cheap spirits and super strength lager. You see, when demand is elastic, an increase in price will cause a fall in total spending. And the elasticity coefficient of cheap spirits and super strength lager is both above one. That makes both elastic. Vintage wines, elastic, uh, inelastic demand, minus 0.7 spending would go up. And here's an example showing when demand is relatively elastic, a tax on a product causes the price to go up. Quite a big fall in demand and total spending decreases. In contrast, if you put a tax, oh, by the way, most, most of the tax is paid by the, uh, the producer in that situation. Whereas if you contrast with a more inelastic demand for a product, a tax increases total spending. In fact, most of the tax is passed on by the supplier to the consumer. Question seven. A bus company estimates the following elasticities for a particular journey. And then you've got some information there. If incomes rise by 10%, and the price of bus tickets rises by 5%, then other factors remaining the same, what would happen to the number of bus journeys? Have a go at the question, press pause, and then play when you're ready to go through the answer. So, uh, incomes have gone up, people have more income, but the price of bus tickets has gone up as well. What is likely to happen to sales, or number of bus journeys? The right answer to 7 is... D, they're going to fall by 17%. Did you notice that the income elasticity of demand for bus journeys in this example was minus 0.6? That suggests that they are inferior goods. So a 10% rise in income would cause a 6% fall in demand. Factor in also the increase in price. Price of bus tickets went up by 5%. Well, the elasticity is quite high, 2.2. So 5 multiplied by 2.2 is 11. So my... Demand falls by 6% due to the income effect, 11% due to the price effect, 70% fall in ticket sales, number of bus journeys taken. Here is question number eight. Over a four year period, as the price of new houses increases, the price elasticity of supply for new houses falls as shown. All new houses are sold. What shows price elasticity of supply became more inelastic from year to year? And the data uh, is in the table and you just have to find the right answer. Have a go. So what shows in the data the price elasticity became more inelastic? It was going down from 0.25 to 0.13 to 0.12. The right answer to question 8 is C, that the proportionate price change was greater than the proportionate supply change. Supply not responding quickly to a change in 
in the, in the price of new houses. Uh, those people doing the live webinar version will be typing into the chat window at the moment some factors that make the supply of new homes inelastic, particularly in the short run. Those people watching the YouTube version will now have this slide shown here. This gives two or three reasons why the supply of new homes oftentimes is fairly inelastic. There's obviously the production time frame to take into account. The delays in planning, the actual construction time period itself can take uh, several months, oftentimes even longer. And crucially, the supply elasticity is lowered when there are limited amounts of spare capacity. There might be uh, limited skilled labour, such as bricklayers and carpenters, plumbers and engineers. It could be the case that the raw materials used to make housing are in short supply. And therefore, the supply of new housing is often fairly inelastic, despite technological progress, which is speeding up production of homes. Uh, for example, additive manufacturing, 3D printers can, can actually construct a home in less than 24 hours. But if the supply of new homes is fairly inelastic, then house prices are determ determined mainly by demand side factors. Two more questions. Here we go. Question number nine. What can be concluded about the about a product which has an income elasticity of demand of minus 1.5 and a cross price elasticity demand of plus 1.2 with another product what can you conclude nice little test of your understanding of coefficients of elasticity here have a go at question nine and the answer to question nine is b product is inferior. We know that because the coefficient of income elasticity demand is negative, minus 1.5. And plus 1.2, two products which are substitutes. An increase in the price of X leads to an increase in demand for Y as people substitute between them. Cross price elasticity of demand for substitutes is always positive. Inferior goods. Well, there's lots of examples of inferior goods, I suppose. Things like own label products, white label products, economy foodstuffs economy travel, um, urban bus transport and cigarettes are probably inferior goods. So there are superior products available. And when it comes to cross elasticity, really important to remember that substitutes have a positive cross price elasticity. The bigger the number, the more close they are as substitutes, whereas complements have a negative cross price elasticity. Price of one goes up, demand for the other goes down. Products which are unrelated have a zero cross price elasticity. We have time for one more question, so let's have a go at question number 10. The diagram shows an industry's total revenue, an industry's total revenue, when different quantities are demanded. Which values should be inserted at points 1, 2 and 3 to identify the price elasticity of demand at that position? <clears throat> Is it A, B, C or D? And I'll give you a clue, it's one of those four. Have a go. Press the pause button, have a go, and then press play again when you want to check the last answer. Okay, uh, we've been through some thematic ideas in the previous questions on this one. The right answer to question 10 is B. So demand is fairly elastic when revenue is rising as quantity demand increases. It's one at the point where revenue is maximised. It's, it's in Less than one inelastic when revenue is falling. Best way to think about this, if you're doing some revision on A-level micro, is this diagram. If you take a linear demand curve, average revenue curve, marginal revenue curve, of course, is half the AR curve with twice the gradient. The point where marginal revenue cuts the x-axis is where revenue is maximised. That is the midpoint of the demand curve, and it's where elasticity is equal to 1. Anywhere to the left, a price fall has an elastic demand response. Revenue goes up anywhere to the right. Uh, demand is inelastic with respect to a price fall, and total revenue or total spending by consumers will go down in that situation. In other words, marginal revenue becomes negative. There we go. Ten questions on elasticity. I hope you did well on those ones. Huge thanks for joining in, and good luck on the on the other tests as part of this series, the Edge in A Level Economics.